Come on, family. Let's make our way into the sanctuary, everyone. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come on, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. We're happy to have you in the house of the Lord. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? You're all beautiful people of the Lord. Amen. Well, I hope you all had a good weekend. We're glad you're here. Amen. We, we thank you for joining us this Sunday morning here at Turning Point Fellowship. Amen. Those of you that are on Facebook Live and YouTube, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sure the Lord has a great and timely word for you. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do something different this morning, family. Amen. Amen. You guys here? Praise God. It's good to have you guys. I don't know. I'm excited when I come to the house of the Lord. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He saved me from damnation. I don't know about any of you guys. That's something to celebrate. That's something to celebrate, family. And I'm not saying it to, to get on you. No, I'm saying it to encourage you. There's a reason for you to celebrate. There's a reason. This is not just any other day. Every day is not every other day. Every day above ground is a blessing. Amen. So we're going to do something different, family. I'm going to say, can we go to Psalms uh, 150, verses 1 through 6? I'm going to say, praise God in his sanctuary. And you guys are going to say, praise him. Okay? Let's try it one time. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him. Here we go. Thank you, Father. Yes. You see, family, that's, that's unity of the spirit. That is unity of the spirit, family. Thank you, Father. Psalms 150, 1 through 6 reads, Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God for his excellent greatness. Praise God with a trumpet and a sound. Praise God with a tambourine and a dance. Praise God with strings and pipes. Praise God with sounding cymbals and clashing cymbals. Yes, now I invite you, I invite you to praise God, amen, amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. You are the lion and the lamb. You are the mighty lion of Judah, Father, who have conquered sin and death, Father God. And for that, we thank you, Father, this morning, Father God. We bless you, we honor you, we celebrate you. This is your house, Father. Have your way, have your say, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Come up and worship, family. Word. 
you are the God of creation. You are the rock of salvation. You are the Lord. You are the light in the Judah. You are the Savior, Messiah. Forever Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord.
to the Lamb who sits on the throne, all blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne, all blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Worship him. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. Hope you're up. Church alive, clap your hands, dance, raise your hands, whatever you got to do. 
This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. This is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. Let's sing that again. Cause this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. This is what it feels like when the church is alive. The church is alive. Our hope is our hope forever. Name of Jesus, we are free and you are with us. The church is alive, the church is alive. Our hope, our hope forever is the name of Jesus. We are free and you are with us. The church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. When the church is alive, the church is alive. Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, we live for you.
Sometimes we just sing it because we see the words up there. But do they mean anything to you in your heart and your spirit? Is it just a song? Or is it something that you can grab a hold of and say, my God is amazing. You know, I, I really like what Thomas did at the beginning of prayer. Got you activated to praise him. Thank you. 
worship you, I live. To worship you, I live.
because it's not about me. It's about the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's who we worship. That's who we praise. We have so much to be thankful for. Praise God. I'm going to have uh, Brother Bert come up. anointing is so rich, so beautiful. And we just long to be in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to receive our tithe and our offering, which is still part of worship. Can I have that? Thank you, brother. We've got uh, 2 Corinthians up here, and I'm going to read 9 through 8. It says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. I'll tell you, God is so good. God is so good. And he gives us everything that we need more than enough. You know, and he does it with joy as we should do it, with pleasure in giving. Don't give grudgingly. You know, give out of a grateful heart. Amen. Only you know what God has done for you. And, you know, there's, there's, it doesn't matter the amount that I would put into that bucket. I could never thank him enough for what he's given me. Right. So if, if you need an envelope, please raise your hands. These uh, handsome young men. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, provide one for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And if you don't have, a, a, you didn't bring a check or cash or whatnot, we can give through. <clears throat> we can text, and the number is. Uh, one more time. Seven one four four seven 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 three six. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So give, and as I said, give out a cheerful heart. You know, God. Only you know what God has placed in your heart to give. So you know, let's be obedient to God's word. You know, God. He owns all the cattle on the hill. He doesn't need it, but he wants to see what our obedience is. We'll be, just like Pastor was saying earlier, and I was reading through my scriptures. Sometimes we just read the word. But we, do we really meditate on the word? Do we chew on the word? Do we have the word in our heart? Just like you said, just going through the motions with that. It's not going to take us forward. God's word says, it's not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And that, that applies to us right now. As God is placed in your heart, come, come and give. Give to our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. 
Stretch our hands forth and let's come into agreement as we pray for this tithe, we pray for this offering. Father, we just thank you right now, Father, for this tithe, for this offering, Father, that you would bless it, Lord, that you would multiply it, Father, that each and every need here at Turning Point Fellowship, Father, is met according to your riches and glory, Father. Father, we just thank you for all those that gave, Father, those that had a heart to give, Father, that you bless us all, Father, and we thank you, Father, for the good work that you've done in each and every one of us, Lord. Because your word says that you will complete it and we'll see it to the very end, Father. Father, we just thank you right now as, we, as we've surrendered, Father, our spirit, our soul, and our body, Lord. That you, Father, would have your way and have your say, Father. That as the word comes forth today, Father, that it would fall on good and fertile ground, Father. That it would produce a hundredfold, Lord. Father, we just thank you because we know that your word is yes and amen, Father. We know that your word will go out and accomplish all that it's purpose to do. Although heaven and earth will pass away, your word will still stand. And we thank you because we stand on that word, which is Christ, Father. We stand on the rock of salvation. Ah, that we say hallelujah, Señor. Father, we could not put enough into this bucket, Lord. There are no words to say, Father. No gestures to do. 
but to say, I love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Father, 
that you have set us free, Father. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, that you formed us in our mother's womb, Father. Every being, Father, every cell, Lord, that you knew us, Father. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for leading us, Father, for guiding us, Lord, onto the path of righteousness, Father, that we do have life, and we have life more abundantly, Father, because what you did on the cross for us, Father. Oh, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. rivers, Father, of the living waters flow through each and every one of us, Father. Father, that we would not be mere hearers of the word, Lord, but that we would be doers of the word, Father. You've called us, Father. You've called us each by name, Father. You know the very strands of hair on each of our head, Father. You formed the stars and called them by name, Lord. There are no words to say, Lord. It's this gratitude that we have, Father, for you, Lord. Taking the nails on the cross, Father. Oh, taking that beating for me, Lord. You, Father, cleanse me of the sin, Father. righteous but you, Lord. We only call ourselves righteous because you live in us, Father. And you are righteous. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's all we can say is thank you, Father. Praise offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. <laughs> he is the Holy One. He is the Righteous One. We're, uh, we're going to go ahead and release our, uh, our children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on. Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Come on. So I'm going to tell you, if, if you don't, someone will. And you know what? That person that, that will, we don't want them. That's why we pray. Lord, remove every evil and wicked person from their lives, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're going we're gonna to release our, uh, our worship team. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you what, like Pastor Eric said, God is in this place. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's not the uh, it's not the quantity of the people or the numbers, but it's the depth that we have. You know, and we're all being rooted and grounded in the Word of Christ. You know, and when you're rooted, trouble's gonna come. God's word tells us that. It says, trials and tribulations will come. He says, but do not fear, for I have overcome the world. And we may sway, we may bend, but you know, we don't go down. Because Christ is with us, and we're rooted, and we know what we're rooted in. And thank you. All right. At this time, I'd like to give a warm round of applause. Pastor Eric, one who's come to join us. 
and is doing a good work for all of us. We love Pastor Eric. Come on, folks. You may be seated. You know, I, I love to see like men of God, like Bert, come and be touched by the Lord and see the flow. See, there's something about anointed music. There's something about when God shows up that you can't stop. Thank you. Is that 55? <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> mm. By the way, um, love you guys. I tell you, I tell you um, um, God is good. And sometimes, sometimes it's kind of like when the Lord comes in, the Holy Spirit comes in, it's like, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? I don't want to go somewhere where the Lord is not. And uh, this message is titled, Return to Our First Love. It's not for you guys, it's for someone else. <laughs> it's for me, okay? So, uh, you know, every minister, we may get a word and, and sometimes we think, oh, it's for this person, it's for that person, and God said, no, it's for you. All right. There are times that as a minister, you're, you're speaking and preaching the word of God, and all of a sudden, the Lord says, that's you, I'm talking to you, like, okay. And you kind of, and as a minister, you got to keep a smile. Praise God, you know, and he's correcting us, praise God. But Matthew 22, 37. Say amen when you have it. You ever, uh, when, a, when a pastor asks you that, if you say amen when you have it, and you don't have it, but you say amen by faith? Especially when you're looking for a Leviticus or Deuteronomy or Habakkuk. Does everyone have it? Yeah, amen, I have it. It says in uh, Matthew twenty two thirty seven, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, verse 39. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, verse 40. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Um, Hugo, do me a favor. I, I, just, I should have told you, getting, let's bring the pulpit down there, the small one, so I could be down here. Please. So he said, to love God with all your mind, body, and soul. Do we? That's a question, a hypothetical question for all of us. Do we love God? Mind, thank you, Danny. Do we love God, mind, body, and soul? Revelations 2. I know we don't. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. I love these men of God. You know, they... I was telling Hugo, it's like, uh, coming from a small church, Pastor Joe, is like, I'm not used to, he, Hugo is putting down my code, he's, he's setting me up, I'm not, I'm used to doing it all by myself, you know, but it's, it's always nice. But Revelations, thank you. Okay, there's, who wants to preach the word for me, so I'll sit down. <laughs> I tell you, this, uh, the men of God here are awesome, I'm sorry. Revelations 2, 4 says, however I have this against you, you have abandoned the love that you had at first. You see, he's talking to the uh, Ephesus church, and they did some good things, but they left their first love. And he goes, he, goes, never, he, he tells the Ephesus church, you did this, you did this, but nevertheless, you have left your first love. And we're going to find out how we can show that we do love Christ. He said that, he, that you abandoned or you walked away from it. 
didn't lose it, you walked away. There's a difference. Now, how many sites besides myself ever lost your iPhone? Right? And, and when you can't find it, what do you do? You look in the most craziest places. Where did I go? You even look in the refrigerator. <laughs> you, go, you go to the restroom, the bathroom, and you look in the bathroom, but you're looking for it. You can't find it, and it drives you crazy. Okay, don't raise up your hands, okay? But it drives you crazy. Where's my phone? And for me, my wife, sometimes I forget where it's at. Andy, and so she she goes, well, let me call it. I go, it's on silent. It's not going to do any good. (laughs) So, uh, but I'm looking for it. But see, there's a difference between losing something and walking away from it. Because when you walk away, you know where it's at, and you're walking away for something else. But when you lose it, it's like, I know it's somewhere, and I'm going to look for it with everything I have. You don't even go to church on time because you can't find your iPad or iPhone. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, none of one's here. I forgot. The message for someone else. You left your first love. He didn't, again, he didn't say he lost, we lost it, we walked away. Turn to Jeremiah 29, 13. I was telling Hugo when we were in the office is that I had like three messages. And I was working on one for a long time because since I don't minister every Sunday, I get time to study and prepare. And so I can pull out a message. And so I was working on this message. It was good. It was a, actually the third part of uh, the chicken and the eagle. If you were here on a Thursday, you, you, you heard about the chicken. I was going to share about the eagle. And I, and I was thinking about, well, that's a good message. That's a really good message. But I, I could tell in my spirit that's not what God wants to share this morning. So a day or two, he gave me the word. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with what? With all your heart. With all your heart, with everything that you have, you seek God in in his presence. Now, I don't know how you seek God. One of the things is to seek God is open up the Bible. Read his word. That's the first thing you should do is open up the word of God and seek God and see what God says. Well, where do I go? I mean, some people say, well, just uh, open the page and whatever page it is, that's that's the one. And and then you read, and Ananias and Sapphira died. No, that's not it. (laughs) Let me change it, right? Sometimes that's okay if you just don't know. But ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to read? What am I going through right now that I can get a word from God because I need it? I need to hear from the Lord. Uh, Coming from a a prophetic ministry, I need a prophecy. I need a prophecy. We used to have at the church that came out of, what that church that came out of, we used to have prophetic ministry. You have a team, or you have a guest speaker, and you have people coming up for a prophetic word. And some people... We, we try to organize it so they'd line up in the aisleway. Okay, you're next. Oh, no, I don't want them. I want them. No, I want them. And then what they do is, well, no, you got to hear her. They go around. Come on. Oh, hey, give me a word. Do you think God's going to honor that? No. Because, first of all, they're seeking man for what, you know, yeah, you want seasoned people. But let God speak to you. You know, let God speak directly to you. We're just vessels and we're imperfect when we prophesy, but praise God for God's grace and mercy because he gives us a word for right on time. But let God speak to you. In fact, this is not in my notes, but let me tell you how it started. When, when God was thundering at Mount Sinai and everything, the people said... We were afraid. He said, 
I don't want to speak to them directly, even though God would speak to them. You speak to them and then tell them, tell us what he said to you. They had an opportunity to hear God speak to God one-on-one, and they blew it. One of the things that we know that we love God is being obedient. Loving God is obedience even when we don't understand what he's asking. I'm not going to turn there, but, you know, it's in Genesis 22 where Abraham, Abraham, and Isaac. And as I was meditating on it, could you imagine, Pastor Joe? Here's Abraham. Come on, son. We're going to go sacrifice. I think that was okay. And you know what's funny? He didn't tell his wife. What do you think would happen if he told his wife? You, ah, you're going to sacrifice yourself before you sacrifice my son. <laughs> That's right there. And, and so here he goes. Isaac goes. He's with his dad, order of obedience. Both of them were obedient. His son to follow his dad and his dad to follow something that was so drastic. And when God said, I want you to sacrifice your only begotten son, your only favorite son, because he had two. Who was the other son? Ishmael. But he made sure Abraham knew which one he was talking about. You see, when we love God, we're obedient to every word he says, even when we don't understand it. Even when God says, forgive, (laughs) there's no way I'm going to forgive that brother or that sister. There's no way I'm going to, you don't, God, you don't know what they did. You don't know how it feels. Oh, I'm sorry. I was at the cross, whipped, killed, stoned, you know, I mean, I'm sorry. You don't think I understand how you feel? I was abandoned. And God says, ask for forgiveness. Just forgive them. Not ask for, forgive them. Let it go. And sometimes, you know, my wife and I, we, 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 a lot of times we talk about the word, and I said, you know, we, we, we have to sometimes, well, I want to know they repented, Sandra. You know, if, I, if I'm going to forgive, but I need to know that they repented. They, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Can anyone tell me who else said that when they were being stoned to death? Huh? Stephen, uh, can we have a star, gold star for Tony up here? You know, you got the answer. We're going to have your name on the board outside, brother. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, he forgave them. And why can't we forgive one another? Why can't we walk in love? See, that's a proof that you love. And I can just imagine Isaac saying, okay, Dad, where's the offering? Well, it's coming. And I, I'm thinking, it, he, Abraham's saying, it's, it's coming. And as he's saying it's coming, here he is, Abraham, tying him up. Yeah, Dad? <laughs> it's coming? <laughs> Why are you tying me up? Not only that, then laying him on the altar. Dad, are you playing games with me? Come on, you know. But we know the story. Obedience is one of the keys to know that we are in love with God even when we don't understand what he's asking us, Ted. How many times have we been in a place that God says to do something and we don't understand why? But we know it's God. You only have $50, God says. I want you to pour it, put it in or give it to someone else. Obedience is uh, one way that we return to the love of God and know that we do love God. Acts 16. We could turn there. Acts 16, verse 23. Because of my time, I'm going to start reading. Acts 16, 23 says, And after laying on them many stripes and threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them safe, who had received such a command, thrust them into the inner prison and baked their feet fast 
to the stars. And towards midnight, say midnight. midnight. Say midnight. midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and praised God in a hymn. And the prisoners listened to them. And suddenly, say suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the presents were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and all the bonds were loosened. One of the things we can identify and understand how much we love God is when all hell breaks loose in our life. When sickness may come upon us, when the storms hit us, and yet we can still sing and praise God. It's not how we feel. Like here at church, well, I can lift up hands and I could sing and, and so forth. But what happens when you're at home and your family is all in chaos? You don't feel good. You lost your job or your job sucks, excuse the expression. And can you praise them during that time? When we love God, we'll praise him 24-7. No matter what storm we're in, we'll lift up hands and sing a song. And all you know is praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then praise God. It's just not enough. I love God. How you doing, brother? I'm praising the Lord. Woo! Then he, they get in a car and someone cuts in front of him. You go, yeah, 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 yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Those that don't know it, I, I have a Pathfinder. I have my Jeep, which I, I drive mostly, but I have my Pathfinder. It doesn't have any horn. That's bad. <laughs> you don't know how many times I want to. But there's no horn. You want to walk in the fruit of the Spirit? I don't know. My wife could attest. I don't know if there was a time, Andy, if I prayed for patience. And then the Lord says, I'm just going to take your, break your horn. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and how many besides myself talk to those people in front of us that are too slow? Can you hurry up? What are you waiting for? One of these days, I'm going to write the top 10 things that bug me about other drivers. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm talking to them. It's a green light. Can you turn? Can you turn now? And then by the time I get to the light, it changes. Look what you did. Look, I'm still here and you're gone. <laughs> just, just let God break something of yours and see how we react. Oh, I know how we, if we, if our phone broke, I can guarantee you, just about 99% guarantee you that that same day you'll go buy a new one. Right? I'll, I don't care if I have to pay credit or I'm going to get a phone because I need a phone. But God will do things in our life to cause us to be patient. He'll do things in our life to cause us to love one another. That, it's so sad that so many people leave church. Well, you don't know what the pastor didn't say hi to me. Oh, the brother, the usher, he told me to sit there and I want to sit there. I'm leaving now because this is not a church that has love. So they walk away. And realizing you're walking away from God. Because if God planted you at this church and God planted you, it'll be up to him to uproot you and take you somewhere else. I, have, I know a brother that left church, left his church, and I know the family and so forth, left his church, and I told him, okay, I'm going to give you 
four weeks to go to four different churches and find the right church. You after that, mm -mm. You, you know, there's some other things involved with that. Why? Because if you stay out of church long enough, it'll become comfortable for you. And you wonder why you walk away, he said to the Ephesus church, you walked away from your first love. Jesus loves us. I mean, you don't, some of you don't even understand what um, my brother Bert was going through up there. The presence of God was thick. Stephanie hit a song that just took us to a different level. The team, let me just say the team took us to a different level. And I was, I was looking at Bert. And then, you know, just a little secret. It's like, as, a, as pastors, we're saying, you know, like, okay. But I could see what God was doing. I said, no, I wasn't dancing, okay? <laughs> no, I used to be able to dance, Tony. <laughs> My wife says, no, you never dance. <laughs> but you, but he was, in, he was in the presence of God. Amen. The manifestation, the kabod of God. So, he was there. And he was just like, he couldn't move. He couldn't do much because God's presence, when you enter into God's presence, there's hardly anything you could do. Let me share this story with you that, and I shared it before, but it's okay if you had steak last week, you can have steak again, okay? So when I was getting ready one time to minister on a Friday night, I was like, I got home, I got out of work, I was tired. And so I went in the bedroom and put on a cassette, because I want to be so spiritual. So I put on a cassette, and I, I was laying in bed. And all of a sudden, as I'm listening to this tape, the minister was speaking about he was driving a guest to the next church. And the guest speaker said, oh, just pull up any old tape, I'll just teach on that tonight. Wow. Praise God there's no ministers like that here in this church or coming to this church. But he just wanted to, give me a tape and I'll teach that tonight. And me, I'm laying there saying, and I had my message. I did. And all of a sudden, the fear, the reverence of God came upon me. So heavy. That even my wife comes and says, are you okay? Leave me alone. Because the presence, the reverence, when we think of fear, we think, oh, God's going to, no, that's not the, what he says in fear. It's the reverence, the glory of God, the kabod that comes into your, uh, our room and lays upon us that you, we can't even move. Have you ever experienced that? If not, you, you need to experience that. When God comes in, and you can't move. But going back to Paul and Silas, first of all, they were beaten. For what? For doing the work of the Lord. For casting out a demon. Out of someone who was that, you know, a fortune teller. My wife, I, I don't know how many places fortune telling are closing, but every time we're driving, I bind that up, I cast it out, they're not going to do any more. <laughs> you know, she takes care of one as we're driving them. Okay. <laughs> but we have to understand they were in a mess. They were hurting, hurting Phyllis for doing the work of the kingdom. And once you think that Paul or Silas would say, Come on, God, I'm doing your kingdom work, and this happened to me, I'm in jail, I'm even in the inner present, the bottom of the present, and just to give you an idea, it's that there's no bathrooms there, so guess what, everything seeps down to the bottom. Could you imagine the odor, the filth, the rats, 
the insects that were in that room with them, they didn't have no king size, queen size bed, no water bed, nothing like that. And that's all they had. But yet at the stroke of midnight, they started praising and worshiping God. See, we got to come to that place when all hell breaks loose that we lift up our hands and we start worshiping. You see, when we do that, God enters in. He may not change the circumstances, but you know that you know that you know you've had an encounter with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You wonder why we need to return to our first love? Because there's so much craziness in this country. And if you think the politicians are going to make a difference, no, it's God that's going to make a difference. But if we walked away from our first love, what are we going to do? Who are we going to go to? Who are we going to hold on to? Your politicians? No. By the way, get out and vote. We need to vote. Wow. I don't know about that. Yes, God made a way. I'm not saying they're the savior or they're going to, but God made a way. So vote. Oh, it like went over you guys. I'm, you know, we vote. Oh, but I only have one vote. And that may make the difference. But it's not only that, it's about your heart. We can complain all we want about the administration and what's happening, but what are we doing about it? First of all, we should be praying. We should be praying and declaring God's word over this country because this country was founded on a Christian values. But we walked away. This country walked away. I just, I just on Facebook, I just saw a, a woman... She was probably older. I just think she was an older woman. She started prophesying, I think, to the school board or, some, or the city. She was prophesying. Where are the prophets? It's not good enough for the prophets to just stand and prophesy in the church. We need to get out there and start prophesying to the lost and the hurting. We need to go to the school boards. You that have kids. Do you know what they're reading? Do you know what they're seeing? You need to get up there in the school board and say, I protest in the name of Jesus, and you must stop. Yeah. Oh, but will they listen to me? God listens to us. Yeah. They, they, they worship God. They, didn't, they weren't, didn't care about their circumstances. Remind me, uh, Jesus, about the song. They didn't, they didn't care. So, uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 37. It says, there was a woman who was a notorious sinner in the city. When she learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's home, she took an alabaster jar of perfume and knelt, kneeled at his feet behind him. She was crying and began to wash his, hair, his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. Then kiss his feet over and over again, anointing them constantly with the perfume. With, with Paul and Silas, we, we know that we love God when it doesn't matter what well, matters, but in spite of what's going on, we worship and praise God. That's one thing we know that we're in God's, we love God and we're, you know, we have a relationship with God. With her, it says that she was a sinner. And the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. We're righteous because of what Jesus did at the cross. Amen. But let's tell you, we're not perfect. Amen. If I asked you to stand up, just to, you know, to give you an idea, if I said anyone here broke one of the Ten Commandments, I want you to stand. No, I'm, I'm just hypothetical. If you, if you broke one of the Ten Commandments, stand up. We probably all stand up. I lied. 
I had, you know, I know it's supposed to worship God. There are no other idols, but, you know, I really like this, and I really like that. We could know. But she was so, Bobby, she was such in love and so thankful for what Jesus did for her. She could not even go in front of him, Edgar, and wash his feet with her tears. Have you ever cried so much that tears kept on flowing? Yeah, someone heard us and we're crying. But have you ever cried so much to her? Thank you, Jesus, for what he did for us. Have you ever had so many tears that they just flooded and it, it was wet on the carpet or whatever you fell on? Have you ever cried so much in thanking God for forgiving us of our sins? She did. And that alabaster rock was the most expensive item this woman had, it said. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to pour out upon the feet of Jesus? Are we even going to the feet of Jesus? We take Jesus for granted. And we wonder why he said to the church, you abandoned, you walked away from your first love. We need to check our heart out. We need to know, you know what? Father, I, I know I haven't really spent time with you. I know that other things, distractions have gone in the way and they become more important to me than you. But I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me and wash by the blood that you will become and always be number one in my life for everything you did, for, for the woman with the alabaster box, let me come and wash your feet with my tears and dry them with my hair. Let me just come and fall on my face, a broken heart, to know I haven't given you the worship that I should. As I said earlier, we, we could sing songs and we did just words and doesn't mean anything. But when we worship God, we're not, we're worshiping God because of who he is. We love God, the Bible says, because he loved us first. Challenge you, go, go into the mirror today and look at yourself and say, wow, he loved me with all my flaws, with all my stinking attitude, with my selfish spirit. Even myself. I'm no better than anyone here. This word is just not for you, it's for me too. We need to return to our first love so when 2023 comes, no matter what happens, good or bad, our hope is in our Savior and King of King and Lord of Lord. And for some of you ministers up and coming, are you willing to go to jail for preaching Jesus. I think it was in New York, Thomas, that someone was preaching on the street and the police came to stop him. He wasn't doing anything wrong except preaching Jesus. And they came to stop him. This is a country of the free. So what happened? The church fell asleep. The church wanted comfort more than what God wanted us to do. We need to return to our first love. If someone can remove the, this pulpit, I'm going to go up here. Ah. <laughs> 
my knees are not what they used to be. No. <laughs> and then I, I tweaked my back the other day. Oh, my God. My wife goes, what were you doing? Oh, I was on my recliner. <laughs> I must have turned real quickly. Oh! <laughs> but there's a song that I'm going to play that I want them to play. It's a song that I was listening to last week. I don't know. I hope it ministers to you, but it ministered to me. See, I don't want to be anywhere where God's not or where I'm not supposed to be. I want to be in a relationship with Jesus. In fact, you know how Facebook says, are you in a relationship? Oh, I'm in a relationship with my wife or my husband. How about if we go back and put, I'm in a relationship with Jesus. In fact, I'm going to do that. Oh, well, I'm in a relationship with Jesus. Join me. But return to our first love. If, if we're really going to go anywhere as a fellowship, the body of Christ, really. Not just turning point, but the body of Christ. If we're going to do anything or endure to the end until Jesus comes, we better have a relationship with the Lord. I want you to bow your heads, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when to start the song, Jesus. But I'm going to pray for you, and then as the song comes, I invite you to come up to the altar and have your own conversation with God. Tell him how you felt. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how, if you've fallen short, because all of us have fallen short. And just say, God, I want my relationship back. I want it better. Father, I pray for all of us, Lord, that we would come to that place of returning to our first love. Lord, I know this is the, uh, the word that you wanted to give to the people, that we would know that in spite of all hell breaking loose, that we would still love you and worship and praise you as Paul and Silas, that we would be like the woman with the alabaster box, Lord, that would be so thankful for forgiving us of our sins, for making a new way that our life would be written in the Lamb books of life, Lord, that we would come and, and love you. Or as even Abraham, Lord, was willing to give up his only, begot his only son, Lord, to be in obedience in spite of him not totally understanding what you're asking or what you were going to do. Lord, let us come and return to our furlough so that we could be obedient, that we'd be thankful, and that, Father, we know that you'd be our source of strength in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Don't play it on there. No, play the song, but don't put it on the screen. Can you do that? Just the song, but not the screen. I don't want them to get distracted. Can you do that? Okay, no problem. Listen to the song, and why don't you come up? Let's raise it.
I pray that all of us would have an encounter with Jesus. That if we walked away and we know that we have, that we would return. He's holy, so we are to be holy. He's loving, so we are to be loving. Thank you, Lord, for loving us in spite of our attitudes, in spite of us walking away. For even as you sought Peter after he denied you, Lord, that you would seek the backslider, you would seek, seek the lukewarm, Lord, and have them, Father, get refreshed and on fire once again. That we open up your word and we would worship and praise you in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to, uh, you can go back to your seats just for a, a minute. That song is titled, by the way, Where You Are. Um, I hope you got something this morning. I believe that God's faithful to his word. He says he watches over his word to perform it. Let it transform your life this much today. Where's uh, my brother Ryan? Okay. Ryan's going to close and uh, going to make some announcements. We didn't make the announcements. Okay. We're nice. I just saw them. Thank you, Father. It's a beautiful place to be to return back to Jesus. Amen? Our first love. Hallelujah. Um, you want to make some announcements? Uh, we have our Harvest Fest, and uh, it's just a beautiful spirit of God here right now, so I'm a little bit, shh, I'm right here. Okay, family? I know normally I'm, <laughs> Harvest Fest tomorrow, 530. If anybody can come out and help out, that would be great. If you can come out earlier, of course, we're starting at 530, and we're just going to barbecue for the community. That's what's taking place. We're not celebrating Halloween we're, we're having a harvest fest to bring the community in. Amen? So we're going to barbecue and hand out some candies to the children. Men's meeting next Saturday. Come on. All right, let's get excited. Come on. Nine o'clock. Men of a higher standard. Praise the Lord. Come on out. Nine o'clock. Bring a brother with you. Bring a neighbor with you. Pick somebody up on the way. Amen? Come on. We are Christians. Pick somebody up on the way if that's what needs to be done. Tell them I got your lunch. Amen. Let's believe God and let's bring a brother with us. Amen. Uh, the following day is November 6th and we're going to have our Thanksgiving potluck, okay? Thanksgiving potluck. Praise the Lord. Nothing like breaking bread with family. Amen. So it's a good invite. It's a very good Sunday morning to invite, just like any Sunday morning. But uh, directly following service, we go out up under the tarp over there, the tent, and we break bread. Amen? So there'll be a lot of great Thanksgiving food, turkey. I hope somebody's going to bring some yams, some candy yams. Come on, somebody. Uh, tamales. Hey. Oh, okay. I like tamales. Women's meeting. Hallelujah. Women of virtue, where are you at? Yes, they're here. That's for sure. November 12th. That's a Saturday. November 12th, 10 o'clock. See Sister Bobby Joe if you have any questions in regards to that. Ladies, I see some new faces here. You're all welcome to come on out, okay? Bring some friends. Bring maybe a co-worker or a sister or a cousin or something like that. It's a good time. It's a good time. Just like us men, we need to get with men. And we need to be surrounded in order to remain grounded. Amen? We need to be surrounded in order to remain grounded. Amen? The Father never, he never set this thing up to do life alone. So come on out. Be a part of with what Turning Point Fellowship is doing. And more important, be a part of what the body of Christ is doing. Amen? Men's events. Yes! 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Men's Advance. It's here, family. It's here. We're going up November 18th, 19th, and 20th. And there's something different, Brother Andy, about this year. And I haven't shared it yet, but God showed me. There's something different. What I saw was, was the men being like an avalanche that took place. This is what I saw. It was like an avalanche. And when we think of avalanche, we think, oh, my gosh, well, I don't want to go up to the mountains that is going to be an avalanche. But I'm talking about men filled with the Holy Spirit coming down the mountaintop. And it was like all hands were up. This is exactly what I saw. The hands were up. Just like when you go on a roller coaster ride, they're like, woo! And every face that I saw had a smile upon it. It was anointed. The Spirit of God had hit these men, and it was like an avalanche coming down. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful vision. And that's what I believe is going to take place this year. I believe that lives are going to be rearranged. But we're not just going to the mountaintop this year. It's not that kind of year. We're bringing the mountaintop home. We're bringing the mountaintop to the bottom of the hill, and we're going to walk in it, and we're going to live in it. In the name of Jesus. Amen? Special service time coming up November 20th. That's the only day that we're going to have this time. Then we will return back to 10 o'clock. Special service time will be at 3 o'clock. That's when all the men come back. And it's a beautiful thing. I don't know if there's some ladies here that their husband, husband excuse me, hasn't been up there yet. But if he's going up this weekend, there's nothing more beautiful. Man, I'm telling you, when you come back and you see your wives and all, all the women there that have been praying for you, they're all going to be here to receive us when we come back. It's a beautiful thing. That's the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. And I believe that's it for our, our, uh, our uh, announcement. Praise the Lord. So if you could stand so we can pray, that would be great. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Father. Um, by the way, let's just do something real quick. Ushers, if you can get a hold of some of those connection cards and pass them out to some. We got some special guests here today. Raise your hand if this is the first time that you've been here to Turning Point Fellowship. Please raise your hands if it's the first time you've been here to this house of God, okay? Praise the Lord, we got a couple gentlemen here. Also, I'd like, you to, I'd like you to raise your hand. If you've only been here a couple times, you're not quite connected with the fellowship, all we'd like to do is get a card in your hand and, and have somebody give you a call and let you know what's taking place. If that's okay, you can fill that card out for us. We would appreciate that. And that way, you know when the next uh, women's uh, meeting is and things like that. So if you can raise your hand, if you haven't received a phone call from anybody here at Turning Point Fellowship, besides family members, please raise your hand. No hands. Praise the Lord. We're all family. Praise the Lord. Come on back. Give us another opportunity to speak into your life. Those of you on Facebook, Facebook, excuse me, Facebook and YouTube world, give us another opportunity to speak into your life. We'll be here Thursday night for Bible study, 7 o'clock. So please tune in. And everybody here, you're welcome to return. Thursday night uh, is something that's really important. It's very important because I don't know about you guys, but uh, one day out of the week is not enough for this brother. Amen? One day out of the week is not enough for this brother. Just like Pastor taught on, return back to your first love. And some of us may not know what that looks like. Come on out. Be a part of the ministry. Amen? Thursday, 7 o'clock. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We glorify you and we exalt you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, first of all, for inviting us into your presence this morning, Father God, into your house of God so that we can worship you, Father. Father, I thank you for those that have made a decision in their hearts of hearts today, Father, to return back to their helper, return back to their first love, return back to the king. I thank you for those decisions that have been made today, Father. 
Lord, and I thank you for those decisions that will be made throughout the week as this word ministers to them, Father. We bless you and we glorify you, my God. Lord, and as we get closer to the holidays, Father God, let it be a sweet smelling aroma unto you, Father God. When families embrace one another, when we as a body of a Christ embrace one another, Father. We don't want to go into our new year the same, even if all is well. <laughs> we know that you have more for us, Father. So we don't want to go into our new year the same, Father God. So therefore, we're going to take our rightful place at the end of 2022 so that we can march right into 2023, a new man and a new woman in Christ. We love you, we bless you, and we praise you, Father. And we thank you for safe travels home, traveling mercies for everyone here, Father, and those, everyone in the highways and the byways, Father God. Bless them as they go forth in their work week, Father God, that they illuminate, Father God. <laughs> thank you for the illumination that is upon this body of Christ, Father God. Illuminate. We will illuminate for you, Father God, and we will share your joy. We will share your word, and we will love on people throughout our week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.